love of sports and entertainment goes back thousands of years to the Greeks with their Olympics and to the birth of theater. And after that, to the Roman Empire and the famous Roman games. When we think about the Roman games, uh, essentially we're talking about three different things. We're talking about chariot racing, the theater, and uh, of course, gladiatorial combat. The chariot racing is the oldest of these three, um, probably uh, from around the 6th century BCE. Um, it took place in, in the city of Rome. From around the 4th century BCE, the chariot racing was held in the Circus Maximus, which was originally just an open space that was situated between the Aventine and Palatine Hills uh, in the city of Rome. By the time of Augustus, that's in the late 1st century BCE, the Circus Maximus had developed into an enormous complex, a stone building that could seat 150,000 people, but on special occasions, and probably most of the time, maybe up to 250,000 people would be crammed in like sardines. To give some sense of comparison, uh, the Indianapolis Speedway, which of course is much larger than the circus, uh, has a capacity of around 250,000. But more interesting perhaps is uh, the largest football stadium in the United States, which uh, is, a, is the Michigan University football stadium, uh, which holds about 102,000. So this is a very, very big structure indeed. Gladiatorial combats were, again, usually held in open spaces, perhaps in the Circus Maximus itself after it had been built. But probably in the early first century CE, there developed a, a particular and special type of venue for these two called the amphitheatre. The most famous, of course, is the Flavian Amphitheatre, which we now call the Colosseum in Rome. This magnificent and impressive building uh, probably had a capacity of around 50,000. It was four storeys high. Uh, and when you go there today, because the floor has now been uh, removed, you can see that underneath what would have been the floor of the amphitheatre was this Im incredible array of tunnels, a maze of passages and rooms. And there would have been trap doors in the floor of the performance itself so that people could pop up, animals could pop up and attack people. The performance itself must have been incredibly exciting, incredibly vibrant as a result. The most popular spectator sport was undoubtedly the chariot racing. These were incredibly popular. Successful charioteers, people who won regularly, would become incredibly famous as individuals themselves. Their faces, their names would be plastered up all over the city and when they died, uh, their deeds would be commemorated in grave markets. The horses too would be commemorated in grave markers. We have pedigrees, we have names, we have complete histories of these horses that won tens or even hundreds of races over the course of their careers. The charioteers themselves were usually slaves, although successful charioteers of course could win their freedom. Uh, and then they would usually continue to, to act as charioteers and they could become very famous uh, individuals in their own right. The Roman writer Juvenal, who lived in the first century AD, accused his fellow citizens of not caring any more about important issues like politics. He said Romans wanted only two things, panum et circenses, bread and circuses. What Juvenal is referring to here uh, is, on the one hand, the monthly grain distributions that were uh, given out in the city of Rome to Roman citizens. Uh, the grain usually came from Egypt, at least at this time. Uh, and if you were a citizen and you were eligible, you could line up and get your grain once a month. Now, it probably wasn't enough to live, but it certainly helped. The second part was the spectacular games and performances that were put on for the delectation of the population. Life was harsh. Life was difficult. You didn't have much of a job. You didn't work all that long. And it was violent and short. And so the games were a way of breaking the monotony. They were a way of having an, a bit of excitement in your life. People dressed up in their best clothes to go to the games. They were a, a significant event. 
In fact, there were a lot of these significant events. By the 4th century, there were 175 days of games out of 200 designated public holidays. So this is a really high proportion. And in fact, it seems that for every day of work, there was a day of holiday in the Roman calendar. Rather nice, I think. There are many similarities between the Roman love of sports and games and our sports and entertainment today, including the loyalty of the fans, but there are also important differences. I think the first of these is religion. The Roman games were religious festivals. They began as religious festivals and they remained religious festivals. The processions that began the, the performances always included statues of the gods who were coming to watch these performances. The second aspect which uh, I think is significantly different between the Roman games and, and our own sporting events is the level of violence. We have cartoon violence, we have Hollywood violence, but we, we, we're afraid of violence, we fear violence. Violence is not part of our everyday existence. For the Romans, it was. There was violence in the street, there was violence in the forum, there was violence in the amphitheatre. And so the level of violence signals to us the difference of Roman society from our own. Roman society, the Romans, they were very similar to us, but they were also very, very different. When we look at the high octane energy of sports and entertainment today, we see a link that traces all the way back to the world of the Roman Empire and the drama and excitement of the famous Roman games.